Roxo Media House. The lead is down to eight. Anderson breaks the pressure, lobs it for Peavy! The exclamation mark! That's the speed right there from A.P. Anderson in the backcourt. Welcome back to State of the Frogs with Coach Jamie Dixon. I'm your host, Bingo Merricks. This is presented to you by Autobahn Porsche. Uh, thanks for being with us today, Coach. Uh, we Big week for you coming up, you know, just past and everything. We want to talk about, you know, Kansas a little bit and OU and then, mm -hmm. you know, moving forward and everything, you know, in the Kansas game, going back to that for a little bit. It's a tough loss, but great for the team you know as far as the morale you know you know sometimes coaches don't want you know want to get mm -hmm. the win mm -hmm. but the team did a great job overall can you talk about that a little bit we did some good things you know the thing that, that we didn't get done was the rebounding and uh, you know you want to be good at what you do and uh, what you emphasize and we didn't get it done so uh, that's what we pointed to obviously there was a lot of discussion about some calls down the stretch but what we can control is the, is the rebounding and the defending and we just didn't get it done in that area offensively I liked what we did I thought we made some improvements in, in, in transition, our numbers were good. Uh, our offensive execution in the half court was tremendous. Uh, and that was where we've really tried to uh, make some uh, strides, make some improvements, make some adjustments. So uh, good growth in that area. But ultimately, we want to get a win, and we didn't get it done. So, uh, But it positioned ourselves well for the next one. Um, we didn't dwell on the uh, uh, you know, what everybody else was talking about. We got right on to Oklahoma, and that was our goal right after the uh, in the locker room after uh, um, the Kansas game was to get on to Oklahoma, not be distracted, focus on the things we need to do, and, uh, and we did. And you talk about adjustments. We talk about the defense, you know, the TCU has been playing. You forced 19 turnovers there in Kansas, and yeah. that was really big. And the defenses seem to still be improving game by game. Yeah, I mean, uh, we, we've been forcing a high number of turnovers. And, again, that's what we've been doing the last couple of years. It's kind of different than what my teams have done in the past. We've made some adjustments on how we do some things. and uh, But we still need to rebound at the same time. And it's hard to combine high turnovers forced – um, a, a big number there and high rebounding numbers. You, it's, it's, there's not that many possessions on the, to rebound on that defensive end. So, uh, but we've got to uh, uh, limit second shot opportunities uh, uh, for the other team. And um, we're doing it at a good rate, but we got to be better in this league. And then you fast forward, we come to OU, great win against the number nine team, doing a great job with that. And Overall, the team just seems to continue with the consistency, you know, and coming in against OU. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, it was a good offensively. Uh, again, ball screen uh, uh, usage as well I, uh, was improved. I think we did a good job uh, of decision making better. I think our guards are improving, as I've been stressing a lot. Uh, decision making, um, Avery and uh, uh, Jameer both. Um, and then Trey's giving us some shooting too as well. So, um, you know, it's just been a process. They're new, all three new guards. You know, if you look at the teams that are good in this uh, in, in the country, they generally don't have three new guards. We're doing it, and we're getting better with it. So we have great kids. They're smart. Uh, they're learning. They're getting better. And uh, they've gone from one-to-one -one assist to turnover guys to two-to-one uh, now that they're at TCU. And so uh, that's a, a tremendous improvement and something we got to keep building off of. And you talk about the learning of the guards and they just keep improving. Uh, against OU yesterday, it seems like they did a great job of getting off the ball, sharing the ball and getting off the ball with the half court offense. Yeah, I mean, well, we were at low turnovers again too and that's that's what we've done uh, as again. So that's part of it. Um, but yeah, it could be better. Um, we have guards that think score first, uh, all of them, and uh, that's that's a challenge. And uh, they've got to understand that we've got really good team defenses that we're playing against every night in this league and recognize that you may beat one, you can't beat two. If two are on, you somebody's open. And I try to keep it simple, you know, right, so it's right. just the numbers. But uh, um, hopefully we can continue to make those uh, decisions and and find the open guy and have the spacing uh, to make it easier to find the open guy and find open out that's good and, and it's just going to keep improving down the stretch as you talk about in this state of the frogs with coach jamie dixon and when we come back we'll have a student question for coach dixon as state of the frogs continue presented by autobahn porsche energy does everything for us 
It's all encompassing. We're all benefiting and affected from it. And it is something that we all need to know about. It is the glue that holds everything together. TCU is powering what matters, our future. We don't just talk about what's needed, we focus on results. The Ralph Lowe Energy Institute is creating a world where energy is affordable, sustainable, and reliable. Back on State of the Frogs with Jamie Dixon, I'm your host, Bingo Merricks, and we have a student question from Titus. Hey, Coach Dixon, this is Titus Fagan, a freshman here at TCU, and my question for you is, do you still play basketball with your players out on the court, whether it be horse or frog? Just want to know if you still play basketball with them. Uh, I made a real uh, quick decision back when I was at Hawaii. I had turned my ankle playing as an assistant. So I said at that point, I will not be doing any more playing um, uh, or even shooting or, or uh, on my own. If I'm going to coach, I'm going to coach. And that's, uh, I made that decision, I don't know, was that 30 years ago. So I'm sticking with it. So uh, no chance of seeing me out there uh, shooting, playing, or anything. Well, you know, you may not shoot or play, but I've been at some practices, though, you know, when it gets intense, I think I haven't seen you deny a few people, you know, trying to show, you know, how to do it on the defensive end, you know, when you're demonstrating maybe well, a couple that's, of years. That's sets. not with the full thing, but yeah, I'm trying to bring intensity oftentimes to practice. There's no question about that, and there are different ways of doing it, and um, but uh, um, some work sometimes, some work other times. Uh, you got to be a little bit uh, 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 re recognize when, when's the right time for everything, but uh, no, we're not gonna we're gonna keep it uh, keep it simple as far as uh, uh, letting the players play and the, the coaches coach. That's good. So that's good talking about defense. But when State of the Frogs continue, we'll talk about a little shooting with the sharpshooter of Trey Tennyson. When we come back with State of the Frogs presented by Audubon, I'm your host Bingo Mary X. Simply the best barbecue in Fort Worth. Dine in, catering, or drive through. 2900 Montgomery, just off I-30. Remember, the best barbecue in Fort Worth is at Railhead Smokehouse. Back here on State of the Frogs with Jamie Dixon. I'm your host, Bingo Marys. We'd like to thank Titus for the student question. And now we have Trey Tennyson here with us. But before we get to talking to you about, like, everything, you know, we was talking, Titus, he said, uh, asked a question to Coach Dixon, and he was telling that, asking Coach Dixon, do – does he still get out there and play with you guys? And you know, he was saying, I know, I guess by the look, no, he doesn't. No, nah, not at all. He just he'll shoot a shot. We do this drill called um, five on five transition. He'll shoot a shot, but he's it's a miss every time. It's a miss every time. <laughs> so, in getting with it, talking about you and your play, uh, let's talk about Kansas for a little bit. You did a great job. Tough loss, but. It was the emergence of Trey Tennyson seemed like for Big 12, like welcome to Big 12. You played a great game. Can you talk about that a little bit in your performance at Kansas? Uh, it was really just from all the work I put in. You know, I'm always in the gym, you know, so it was kind of, I mean, I know I haven't really shown that throughout the season so far, but like, I was still hitting every shot I shot pretty much throughout the year. I just really went, it wasn't high volume like that, but um, that was really it. I was just, I got the looks and I'm gonna knock them down. You know, from my teammates, I was really just throwing good passes. Yeah. And you talk about not getting the looks, but in early, there, your potential has always been there, you know, even from non-conference and coming into Big 12 play. And it just seems like now that the competition is getting more steep, it seems like your play is rising up even more. Can you talk about your preparation for each game and how much time do you actually spend in the gym? Uh, I'm in the gym every morning. I work out every morning. I'm the first one in practice, so. That's really just, it really just comes from my preparation. But, you know, the big game is really what I live for. You know, I, I, you put in the work and nobody's looking. And whenever there's thousands watching, it'll be ready. Right. So talking about going to Kansas, the flight got delayed five hours. And, you know, most of the time, you know, people might sit down, you know, relax, read a book or watch Netflix. But you decided to come into the gym and get some more work in. Can you talk about that a little bit? Uh, the practice right before we left, I think I shot, we keep track of our stats in practice. I think I shot like two for 11. So I was, after that, I was like, I can't go into Kansas with shooting like that. So I just remember right after practice, you know, I went home, chilled for like an hour or two, eight, and then came back to the gym and worked out before we left. And it showed. So that workout there, what did that workout consist of, if you can share with us? Uh, I really just did a lot of like form shooting and like, um, 
like spot shots, but I was like focusing on like the mechanics instead of just like, cause you know me, everybody kind of close out real fast. Always got to shoot it real fast, but I was just focusing on really catching it, not like dipping the ball and just catching it and focusing on my form. All right, that's good. And then now talking about the Oklahoma game, you know, it was a tough shooting night, but you did a great job in other areas because you're on the scouting report now. And so just with you being on the scouting report, you're opening it up for your teammates as well. Can you talk about just maybe how you felt in the game? Because it looked like you had great looks. How did yeah. you feel as far as that? Uh, I was, they just won finally yesterday, but I still had an impact on the defensive end. You know, they put me on uh, number two, McCollum, because he, he started cooking real early. So they put me on him. And he didn't score until the end of the game, and I let him get that one wide open at the end. But other than that, you know, it's just I just want I'm just want to win. So I really don't care how. That's why I came here because I really I could have gone anywhere, but I wanted to come here because I wanted to win. Yeah, that's that that talks about the team morale and everything. And so talking about your teammates, we had uh, one of your teammates, E Man, scored a thousand points. Yeah. That's that's pretty good and as far as in TCU history and everything. Can you talk about that and how the team was very happy for him in scoring those thousand points? I didn't even know he didn't even talk about it, so that kind of shows what kind of team we got because I didn't even know he was – I thought he'd been at it just from, you know, thought he'd been at it, but he didn't say nothing, so he didn't even know until after the game. And I think that just shows how important you guys are together. Just yeah. it, you don't you don't care about who shines on the court. You know, one night you may have twenty five, one night PV may have twenty five, and that's what makes TCU so dangerous. Just the depth of the team. Can yeah. you talk about that a little bit? Oh yeah, it's it's very you know it's difficult. You know, we got in practice anybody can really just go off, and you're just like, dang, like, but. It's just, it's really hard in practice. We are we all compete because anybody really just does any anybody can just have a great day in practice. So last question we'll ask you. So moving forward to Houston, and Houston is a physical team coming into the game and uh, coming off of the great win against Oklahoma. What would be Trey's preparation in going into the Houston game? Uh, same as always. You know, I'm just going. I'm putting work out right now before or after practice because we got weights right now, but. Just the same. I don't, I don't really. I'm always level headed. I don't really get too high or get too low. So it's just gonna be the same. All right. Well, we wish you the best and good luck in the Houston game on Saturday. This has been State of the Frogs with your host uh, Bingo Mary X, and we'll come back and we'll talk with Coach Dixon and the preview uh, for the Houston game as State of the Frogs continue. Brought to you by Autobahn Porsche. We're lucky to have a collective that's as strong and as powerful as the Flying T Club. It's a big deal for us. It is a game changer. You know, I would just encourage any any fans out there to support it. Everyone asks me, what's the biggest priority? And I say, NIL is big. Please jump on board, show these student athletes how much they mean to you. The thing about NIL is I think there's a right and a wrong way to do it. And the Flying T Club's do it the right way. Let's keep winning. Join the Flying T Club today. That was our sharpshooter, Trey Tennyson. We appreciate his time. We're back with State of the Frogs with Coach Jamie Dixon. And now we're going forward, moving forward to Houston, uh, third top, third straight AP top 25 team. And this is a big game coming up on Saturday. And just to keep the consistency going, uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, obviously Houston's a team that uh, knew the conference, but certainly have been on a, on a run here these last uh, a few years. Really a, a long history of basketball uh, success. have had great players. They've got the new facilities now, unbelievable facilities. They've got Jordan Brand. Uh, they've got Coach Sampson. Uh, and they've got them playing defense and rebounding that's what they do and um, that's uh, that's their calling card and and we've got to match their intensity their physicality uh, while also executing on the half court so uh, gonna be a great uh, opportunity I know the place will be packed we'll have a great atmosphere there again and uh, you know it's a sold-out arena students should be back and uh, there's nothing like you know college basketball uh, uh, what this team has brought the, the high energy the the fast breaking style and a sold-out arena you talk about the physicality with Houston. This will probably be the most physical game you may face of the season because Houston is a real physical team as far as offensive rebounding and just playing tough defense. Yeah, they're old. Uh, they're experienced. It's 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 what they do. It's a uh, part of uh, Coach Sampson's. Uh, uh, um, 
beliefs and 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 uh, uh, principles. But um, you know, we take pride in that too. And and as I said, you got to be good at what you emphasize, and and you got to execute the things that you that you're uh, putting out there every day. So we've got to uh, block out. We've got to limit their uh, uh, opportunities on the offensive end to one shot. And um, and then we want to continue to take care of the basketball, which is what we've been doing very well here now in conference play. That's been a process, uh, but our decision making has improved, as I've said, uh, mainly from our guards, but also just an understanding of the new guys where they need to be. And just with that, a team has done a great job of responding. You know, sometimes in the game may not start uh, very fast or upbeat, but the team has always done a good job of responding. And now with Houston, you know, losing the game, they're going to come in with a chip on their shoulder because TCU is normally your team is normally a plus nine, plus 10 on a rebounding mm -hmm. battle. So this is going to be a really Two juggernauts going at it. Okay. Yeah, I mean that's what they do. That's what we do, and and that was kind of similar to Oklahoma. They've been a, a good rebounding team, so we emphasize it. But uh, simply put, they they dominated the glass early. Got it turned in the second half. Got the lead up to seventeen, and that was uh, uh, those things go hand in hand in our minds. So um, the, yeah, we we can't start off slow. I think we did defensively in the first game, uh, the last game I should say against Oklahoma. We've got to go set the tone defensively, and know what we want to do, and, and execute it from the start. We can't be a step late on ball screens. Uh, we can't be in uh, out of position on rotations. Uh, we've got to be prepared uh, for again and and open. Shot Shots to them are like passes because those are the opportunities they go to get second shots. Similar to us. I mean, it's similar for a philosophy. Uh, we've got to defend. So they're taking tough shots. Offense is unbalanced. And uh, we can come up with the lo loose balls, the long rebounds. Well, it's going to be a fun game. So look for that on Saturday at 5 p.m. on ESPN as the State of the Frogs with Coach Jamie Dixon. I've been your host, Bingo Mary X, presented to you by Autobahn Porsche. And we'll see you next time. Roxo Media House.